Let's talk about another transformation in soil called immobilization. And immobilization is simply the conversion of inorganic nitrogen forms in a soil to organic nitrogen forms in the soil. This is driven by microbial uptake of nitrogen. This occurs when microorganism populations are expanding due to oftentimes adding an energy source or an amendment that contains carbon. And that amendment does not contain enough nitrogen to supply the needs for a growing microbial population for amino acids and proteins. And so where do these microorganisms find nitrogen? They scavenge the soil for inorganic forms of nitrogen. And this is immobilization. The factors that affect immobilization are identical to the factors that affect mineralization. And those factors are my, uh, moisture content and temperature. Moisture content needs to be about 50 to 60% water filled pore space, field capacity. That's optimal because these microorganisms are aerobic microorganisms and of course they need water to survive. And the temperature has an optimal range between 25 and 35 degrees centigrade and the microbial activity tapers off on either side of each of those temperature ranges, just like mineralization. And just like mineralization, immobilization is driven by the carbon to nitrogen ratio of the material that's added to the soil. So let's look at this. So this figure shows you the graph on the right of when we add a low carbon to nitrogen ratio material to a soil. We've discussed this in the mineralization unit or video. On the left, here we discuss the addition of a high carbon to nitrogen ratio material to a soil. And for this illustration, let's pick on wheat straw. Wheat straw has a high carbon to nitrogen ratio, unlike alfalfa on the right hand side. Wheat straw in this illustration has a carbon to nitrogen ratio of 80 to 1. Why is it so high? Wheat straw itself is so high in terms of carbon to nitrogen ratio because the nitrogen, not all of it, but quite a bit of it has been translocated to the grain that we as humans harvest. Thus, the carbon to nitrogen ratio in the straw itself is high. Keep in mind the amount of carbon that's typically present in any plant material stays relatively constant and nitrogen can fluctuate depending on the plant material or component that we're looking at. So let's imagine we till this back into a soil. What are we going to see in terms of a soil response? So we're adding carbon, i.e. an energy source for microorganisms. Their population expands, boom. And when it does, they begin to respire greater and greater amounts of carbon dioxide, just like you and I. The response of CO2 production is the same as what you see on the right-hand panel. And this is a direct relationship to the increase in microbial community population. You just added, or we just added, a carbon to nitrogen ratio that's relatively high. There's not a lot of nitrogen present in the wheat straw itself. So as the population of microorganisms expands, they need to find nitrogen for amino acids and proteins. And where do they find that nitrogen? They find it in the soil in the form of inorganic nitrogen. And in this case, this is illustrated by the decrease in soil nitrate nitrogen concentration. In some instances, it can actually go to zero and ammonium concentrations would go to zero. This is a direct response of the high carbon to nitrogen ratio material. There is a lag. I can't tell you if it's going to be four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks because it's dependent on moisture, temperature, and the C to N ratio of the material. Eventually, the amount of nitrate nitrogen will snap back and should be slightly greater than your initial starting point if nothing is removing the amount of nitrogen or nitrate nitrogen in this case from the soil. This increase in soil nitrate concentration is a result 
of the inflection point and the downward turn of CO2 production, which is equivalent to microorganisms dying, decaying, and be being mineralized by other microorganisms. And thus we see the response in terms of the amount of nitrate nitrogen increasing slightly over where we began. So I hope now you see the difference between adding low versus high carbon to nitrogen ratio materials to soils. And this could be directly related to what may be occurring in say a compost bin that you might have or a raised garden bed, or if you're in production agriculture, in a production agricultural setting where you add these types of organic amendments to your system.